All right, so Honorable, good morning. Good morning. I trust you're fine. Pleasure, great. Okay, so which formation are we going to deploy today? 010 or 100 <laughs> or 001? Given the situation of the economy, you, have to, you still have to do your 010. 010. Zero zero. Zero. Uh, if you misbehave and do one in the morning before the, the zero, dead. Uh, by, by afternoon, <laughs> you'll be drinking water. Bata, by bata, evening, bata. by bata. evening, there you'll be last, last, everybody, you don't go chop supper. <laughs> anyway, but uh, today I'm not going to engage you more on. Bits about the economy. It has to do with your strong affinity for Arsenal. Maybe you will need to explain to us what's with this strong affinity for Arsenal. I love the beautiful game. And um, the only team that's ever come close to playing the game as beautifully as Arsenal does is, is the Barcelona team that had Ronaldinho as his, yeah. his, his, his mainstay with a young Messi coming up. Yeah. You know, but that team, that, that's a team that, that, the only team that's come closest to the Arsenal team. And Arsenal has a, a football philosophy, a football mentality that that's just beautiful. We play the game for the yeah. fans to enjoy. It's not about, I, I mean, today football has become so much about money and trophies and how big your trophy cabinet is. People have forgotten that football is a sport, is entertainment. Yeah. People need to enjoy the game, you know, and Arsenal on a good day would win the match, whether they win the match or not, they will play some good football, you know, and, and for me, it's that love, so that, that the philosophy of the team is just basically... What's what that is. one thing that got you to support Arsenal? I, I believe I, that the fact that at a point in time, Arsenal was was the misnomer in, in the English football. Yeah. A number of foreign players in there, you know, um, you had uh, Iwan Kwakanu's in there. I, I mean, there were more black players in the team than, 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 than English boys, yeah. um, which was not normal in the late 90s and early 2000s. Yeah. Um, most of the other teams had more British and European players. Yeah. Um, we had La, Le Professeur, um, Asen Wenger, um, who himself brought about that whole new philosophy. Arsenal had moved away from the George Graham days of boring, boring Arsenal. Yeah. One nil to the Arsenal yeah. was always the refrain and the chant um, to playing this beautiful brand of football. And he opened, I believe that Arsene Wenger opened the Premier League for a lot more people. It, you had one or two foreign players in other clubs, you know, but I mean, African descent or of African yeah. descent, very few of them, exactly. you know, and yeah. and he 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 brought them to the limelight in 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 in, in the English at a point in time. English press took him on; they were yeah. very angry at the Arsenal team. Ah, uh, you're signing blacks and all of that. And, and even in the dressing room, the language of communication was French and not yeah. English. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> but you should be a happy man, especially how Arsenal have had to start their season. It's been such an amazing run for Arsenal. What's the chances, you know? In the final analysis, you think you can win the league or you still need time to be up there? I mean, like every football fan, you want, you want, you want your team to win the league. And so it'll be easy to just jump up and say, Arsenal is going to win the league this yeah. season, especially with the kind of start we've had. But I'm more of a pragmatist. And it's been a difficult eight years since the eight, nine years since the departure of, uh, Wenger. for me, Arsenal's greatest manager yeah. ever, Arsene Wenger. Um, the club has gone through the real building phase. And if you understand where the club has come to and the challenges that the final years of Wenger faced and his departure and what the coaches after him have had to deal with from Freddie Jumberg to, to Unai Emery and all of that, where we had to pay off the loan for the Emirates, yeah. you know, and what that did for our, our transfer budget and how Arsenal had to keep selling his best, best players yeah. every year, every season to balance the books. You know, if you're just a fan who just wants to follow the yeah. club, you wouldn't appreciate these yeah. things. But when Henry was at his best, we had to sell him. Robin Van Persie, we had to sell him. You know, you sold your best players, Fabregas, Nasri. Yeah. We sold them because we had to balance the books. And it's been a building process. We've decided not to buy big established names but to bring the boys up from colney the training facility yeah. and and it's beautiful to see that you've got the likes of martin odegaard captaining yeah. the arsenal team i mean this is someone under 25 odegaard is about 24 yeah you know um and if you, arsenal actually has one of the youngest teams in the league yeah, at the moment yeah. at the moment you know bukayo saka um 
around 21. You've got Emil Smith Rowe yeah. around 20, 21. These are all graduates who've come through the ranks, right. grown through the Arsenal mill, you know. And so it's beautiful to see these boys play, Reese Nelson and all of them. Yeah. Hold down their own, Eddie Nketiah. Yeah. You know, to, to see Eddie Nketiah wear the number 14, the, yeah. that number Iconic 14 jersey, jersey, you know, yeah. and, and see him play the way he plays, the pace, the, the way he tries to finish, reminiscent yeah. of the great Thierry Henry. I, I'm excited about what we, where we are. I, are we there to win the league? It could happen this season, but I'll give the team another two seasons. Two seasons. I'm not too sure. Arsenal. We will definitely be in the top four this season. Definitely in my mind. Why we'll play. We'll emphatic? go back to. I mean, no, I mean, the it's quality. It's the moment of the season. When you look at the quality of the team, one one problem Arsenal has had is that Arsenal has been very light on quality. Yeah. And Arsenal over the last eight years or ten years has revolved around individual brilliance of one player or two players. That's not what you have with the team now. Now you have a team that is, and and again, the team had had an identity crisis. We had an identity crisis. We were low on confidence. Yeah. I mean, there was a problem with Arsenal. You look at the team from the latter part of last season, the second half of last yeah. season, and and then the way they've started this season. So you can say this 2022 year, yeah. you realize that the team has come more into his own. There's more stability in the yeah. team. So long as the octopus is not injured and, and, and he's on the field, yeah. he brings some stability. Jaka has matured better. Yeah. And so you see that you have a team that is more 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 balanced, yeah. a team that has more self-belief. Yeah. You have a defensive line that is stronger now with William Saliba yeah. claiming his stake back in the team. In fact, he's going to become a stalwart in this Arsenal team. Absolutely. Yeah. At that young age yeah. again, another very young player, yeah. around 21 or even less. And, and you see the pairing with Gabriel Megalis, yeah. also around 25. So you realize that the team, and, and, and one thing we've lacked was squad and depth. Yeah. Okay, once a player got injured, the team was, you had fringe yeah. players having to come in. Now you can lose party and still have a Fabio Vieira who yeah. was stepping and, 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 and slot in seamlessly. Yeah. Or you have an El Nini and Jaka pairing, that will still work. Um, if, if, if Gabriel Megales is not there, you still have the ability to move Ben White, ben White. back into the center, center, center of yeah. defense. We, we don't have a right back, the right back is, is injured. Cedric is not available, Tomiyasu is yeah. not available, but you have Ben White able yeah. to play in that wing, you know? And having, having that ability to have that flexibility for a coach, where you have Emil Smigo yeah. having to sit on the bench, yeah. Eddie Nketiah is on the bench yeah. because of the quality in the team. And I think that this is in this window we bought we bought fantastic players. Okay, so uh, it looks to me <laughs> as though, so it means the weight has been worth it after all. I mean, in regards to Mikel Ateta. Trust in the process. all of the tumultuous moment Arsenal have had to go through, I think, would you want to say to me that you found the right successor, the proper successor of Papa Wenger? Wenger's boots are very big to fill. Yeah. I mean, it's still early days yet for okay. for okay, for so Ateta. But but but, but 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 I think that I think that he's on the right path. Okay. I think that he came in. I was one of the people who questioned his decision to sack Obama Young. Okay. Take the captain's band away from him and say I don't want him in the middle of the season, January. Yeah. You had not bought a, a replacement. I mean. How was the team going to score goals? Same manager who showed Ozil the exit. Absolutely. Yeah. Kicked Ozil. And for me, Ozil is one of the most gifted footballers yeah. ever I agree. to grace the football yeah. pitch. People don't understand him. He may have attitude with work ethics, yeah. but when it comes to technically gifted, naturally yeah. gifted players, Ozil is in a different world. Yeah. You know, To be able to kick Ozil out, to be able to kick Obama Young out and say, this is my team, my way or the highway. Yeah. For a coach to be able to do that, you must respect him. And, and for him to be willing to take such bold decisions and, and hold his own, and, and, and this is a young manager as well. I mean, Arsenal is the biggest club he's ever coached in. He was a, an assistant manager. He's never been a yeah. manager of a, of a team. This is the first managerial role he has. Yeah. And for him to take a big club, I mean, <laughs> may he so rest in peace, the Queen of England's club. Yeah. I had beat, you know, and, 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 and take such hard decisions yeah. and mold a team and if you watch the, the documentary that was done by Amazon, um, All or Nothing, the Arsenal season, yeah. and you see the behind the scenes decisions that were taking, himself and Edu seem to have struck a setting yeah. chemistry yeah. that's working for the team. Okay, so let's talk about the North London derby. It's on the horizon, just in the back of the international break. What's Arsenal's chances? Especially when last season, I think in the first leg, you won 
three one. I was one, in the stadium and then the that day. Fa- really? I was in the I was in the Emirates that day. I wouldn't day. believe you're gonna be there too. You know this time. Unfortunately, no. <laughs> you're not gonna be there. I, I I've got work that's taking me out, and I arrive on that day. I can't be in London well, as that's well. That's kind of unfortunate. <laughs> but anyway, you beat them three one, but in the corresponding fixture, they beat you three zero. What's yeah. your chances going into what the season? Tottenham is a team that's also in progress. Good, yeah. good, good work. Antonio Conte is doing a lot of good work there. You know? job he's done and, so far. and 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 I mean, he's transformed the team. It's a team that's busting with belief. You looked at how Son Heung-min came in in the last game after being benched. Fantastic response. Three goals, a hat trick in thirteen, 13 minutes. minutes. That's in their last I mean, game. Yeah, their last game. Right. And, and and so that's a guy who's bursting with with a lot of confidence, you know. They, they have got a solid team. You can't underestimate the Tottenham team. But again, Tottenham and, 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 and the Arsenal is is a thing of pride. 60 it? times you've played, you've won uh, 22, you've won 50, 23, have ended in draws. I, 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 would, I, would be, I, would, I would be hopeful for a national win because we're, we're playing at White Hat Lane. Yeah. And um, it's not a very friendly place to go. And, um, They're not too confident. I'm being realistic. Okay. I mean, it's it's a tough game. Yeah. I mean, it's a derby after you, all. yeah, and derbies derbies have a, have can take all kinds of twists and turns. I'm confident in the Arsenal team, but I have a lot of respect for the Tottenham team. This is not the Tottenham team we played in September last year. Yeah. This is a completely different Tottenham team. It's also not the Arsenal team that was beating yeah. in the second half of the yeah. season yeah. last year. This is a completely different yeah. Arsenal team that wants to remain on top of the table. Three points here for me is going to be a six-pointer. Mm. A victory here yeah. is going to be, even though it's three points on the log, it's going to be as good as six points. That's how important this game is. Okay. Whoever, whoever shows up in the first 20 minutes will bust the game and will win carry the day. And I'm, I'm hopeful that the team comes out very fast, out of the blocks. What will be your biggest or what will represent failure for you this season? That's for Arsenal. Ending the season outside outside of the top four, that would be unacceptable. Why are you guys so hopeful you're finishing in the top four? That's Arsenal. Because I, I'm I'm looking at the teams that made Carina the top Bundes. four. The oh come on, that's <laughs> that's 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 not right. That that's been the situation over the last three four seasons. It is on, because it is even on that even that under Wenger, it, yeah. even under Wenger, we always made the top four, no matter how bad it was. In the last few years, you know, yes, and 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 that's why I said it's a team that's been in 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 in. It's a, it's a rejuvenation of a team. That's the problem Manchester United is facing right now. Every team at a certain point in time yeah. face, reaches a, it reaches a peak, yeah. begins to decline, and the team has to rebuild and regenerate Go itself cycle, again. Yeah. It's a cycle. You saw it with Liverpool. Yeah. Okay, the decline of Liverpool, irrespective of the beauty of Michael Owen and, and that squad you had, the Steven Gerrards and the Hargraves. And, I mean, the, the, the players you had in that Liverpool team, they did have their dry run. And then you had the Salah money season, yeah. where I mean Liverpool was a delight to watch. Okay. So it happens with every team, you know. Manchester City is trying to deal with it, but even City this season is not the invincible City of last season. People are beginning to see the chinks in their armor. Yeah. They've gotten an alien as a striker, yeah. Ellen Haaland. Yeah. I mean that guy's no human. He's, 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 he's an alien. He's a, he's a he's a science project. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but you realize that back the the, the back line yeah. is beginning to yeah. leak. You know, and so it, it's it's normal to have that spell. But for me, I think that where Arsenal is this season, if we do not make the top four, then there'll be huge questions to answer. Really, absolutely. Okay, so uh, would you then tell Arsenal fans in Ghana to be measured in the expectations? Well, measured in the expectations in terms of winning the league. Top four, I mean. Absolutely not. They must demand the top four of the, of, of the club. The club has to make the top four. I mean, we're tired of playing f- midweek football on, on Thursdays. We want to play on, on Tuesday and Wednesday. <laughs> I mean, and with a, the with a quality in the team today, I mean, Chelsea. Chelsea shouldn't be beating us to a top four position with the team that they have. Manchester United should not be beating us to a top four with the team they have. The only teams that can say they have a quality as a stance today to make a claim for the top four is maybe Manchester City. Even Liverpool, without money, and with with, with, with the drop in form of Virgil van Dijk. Virgil van Dijk is no longer the Virgil van Dijk of three seasons ago. Yeah. Uh, you're beginning to see that even they would struggle to make it into the top four. Tottenham will make a solid case for the top four this season as well. So you have two solid teams that may not have been in the top four. Or, well, Tottenham was in the top four, but who, who want to make 
a claim for the top four. Tottenham Arsenal want to find themselves okay. in there. And so I, I would want to see an Arsenal I'll team in the back top four. Here so we can go back to this conversation. If Arsenal Certainly. are unable to get into the top four. Uh, there'll be huge questions for the club to answer, the management okay. of the club to answer. We'll see how it goes. The 